aka Megawitz back and in today's video I'm going to go over the top 16 deck lists from Lily Regionals and I'm so excited to go over these because it's so diverse and in my opinion that's a sign of a healthy format and coming from a person who played and started playing when ADP Zacian was the format and playing Magic competitively when Hogak ran the format in Modern I love to see the signs of healthy formats but before we jump into the deck list here don't forget to leave a like smash the subscribe button drop a comment down below ring those notification bells and let's jump into these top 16 deck lists Alrighty, guys and to start us off with our top 16 deck list we have our 16th place we have lost zone giratina i like lost zone giratina a lot it is probably my second favorite lost zone variant to play um I don't know, nothing too crazy about this deck. I mean, they're not playing Iono, and they're playing Temple of Sinnoh and Spirit of Tombs in the deck. That's about it. Other than that, this is just copy-paste any other Lost Zone Giratina deck you're ever going to see. You can play one Cram Ran and two Sableye, or two Cram, one Sableye. That's kind of just depending on the person. I play two Sableye, one Cram Ran in my version. Um, you can play Water Energies if you want. I feel like at this point, now, you have to play Water Energies just because there's so many, like, baby Pokemon that you can KO with Greninja, like, early on in the game against other Lost Zone decks, against, you know, Gardevoir, Charizard. Like, there's so many... Mirai, I don't know if they put Mareeps down and they don't be able to evolve them fast enough. Or even if they do evolve my guess you still KO because it's only 90. So, like... Greninja is such a good card, and I feel like you have to play Water Energies if you're playing Greninja in a deck that can just power them onto it. That's my personal opinion. Um, I don't know. I like this deck. It's I'm, I'm not shocked to see it here. Lost Zone Giratina is a very good contender right now. Um, alrighty, so let's jump into our 15th deck list here. We have Turbo Lost Zone Box. Guys, this deck is like copy-paste to any other Lost Zone Box like Turbo variant right now. I mean, you can play Clara instead of Four Super Rod, but other than that, it's copy-paste. It's the same thing. It All these lists look almost identical because Turbo Lost Zone Box has been a thing now for I can't tell you how long. <laughs> so, seeing Turbo Lost Zone Box up here does not shock me by any means at all. There are a couple decks in here that do shock me that they made it this far, but I love to see them here. Um, so yeah, nothing too crazy about this list. I mean, you got, you know, your two Sableye, your one Cram, your Raikou, your Dragonite. You play one Echoing Horn, you play your two Pokestops, so you can just kind of get things rolling. This person isn't playing Iono. Um, I personally would play at least one Iono or two, so I probably would ditch like a Lost Vacuum and go to three Rope just to add to Iono in the deck, or at least one in some sort of way. Just because Iono is such a good card, um, especially because if you're Roxanne's prized, you have no other outs to choke your opponent if Roxanne can't get online that turn. So that's the only thing I would change about this deck, but other than that, it's it's good. I mean, it's a good deck. All right, for our 14th here, we have Single Strike Lugia. You all thought it was dead. You all weren't believers. I'm a believer. I still play Single Strike Lugia to this day. I personally prefer to play Single Strike Lugia over Carlos Lugia. There, I said it. I I don't know. I like Single Strike Lugia more. It's, in my opinion, it's more consistent. It feels just, you can hit bigger numbers easier. And being able to just play Urn of Vitality and put Single Strike Energies back into the deck can kind of help if you have to Single Strike Crush really early on or... I mean, you accidentally discard them or something, or your Yevatol gets KO'd, and then you can just earn a Vitality, put them back in, put them on Stone Journer or Tyranitar. Unfortunately, this deck is really hard in the Charizard. It's really difficult for this deck to beat Charizard a lot of the times, just because Cobalion's like our only out, really. But other than that, I kid you not, this is almost identical copy-paste my list. The only thing different in my list of Single Strike Lugia and this person's list is I don't play Radiant Tesrini at all. Um, I play a fourth DT instead. I don't really worry about the Rapid Box matchup that much. We're kind of already favored in it anyway. And we usually can do pretty okay in the Lost Zone as well. Um, you can play Radiant Tesrini in it if you want. If you're going to expect a lot of like Lost Zone and you know Rapid Box. Currently, I'm just not playing it in mine because I haven't. I don't run into it that much, especially in like my local metas and stuff. I don't run into a lot of Lost Box or Rapid Box. So I'm not playing it in mind, but this is like every other single strike list right now, and I love it. So, going into our 13th deck list here, we have 
another Turbo Lost Zone box. And this one is very different, actually, because we're running Squawkabilly, we're running Clara, we are running Super Rod still, we're running Bravery Charm and Town Store. And the reason we went Town Store is so we can find Bravery Charm and Forest Seal Stone. And the reason they run this and it's in this deck is because it helps you in your mirror match, actually. Because for Town Store, you can find Bravery Charm and then just put it on your Dragonite. And now your Dragonite is sitting at 270 hit points and you're not really able to deal with it that much. And it's going to take two turns for them to KO it unless they put like damage counters on it some point earlier in the game. So, I like this list a lot. I personally would probably just cut the Collapse Stadium. Um, I don't know. I guess you also run the Collapse Stadium to get ready for Squawkabilly later on. But I would really like to see like an additional energy of either Lightning or Psychic, depending on which way you want to go. I don't really care which one. But I feel like the energies are very tight you need to you have to get really lucky that aren't none of them are prized because if you go like raikou early on then you're like attach lightning and then you can't get it back into the deck somehow you're kind of just sitting there awkwardly with dragonite just like well i uh didn't pull my lightning energy off my prize and i can't do anything with dragonite because i can't get the other one that i just discarded and lost back into my deck so I don't know. I also don't play Lost Box that much, so I could be entirely wrong about the thinking and process of this. But that's just my personal thoughts. Alrighty, jumping into our 12th deck list here. We have Gardevoir with Reversal Energies. This deck is, I mean, it's the same thing. It just, it is. I mean, Spirit Tomb's a little different. We saw Tord Reklev, I believe, play it in his Worlds list um, just to deal with Mew. Uh, but you are playing Mirage Step, Reversals, and it's just go big with Zacian and Baby Gardevoir and just hit big numbers. So, love to see it. Gardevoir is Gardevoir. Gardevoir does well. It, you know, the greens are long, they're grindy, but if you can grind them out and win, you can just kind of win 1-0 and then go to time the last game and not have to worry about anything. So, Gardevoir is really good at that kind of stuff, and you can hit really big numbers and get punished for it very literally. Um, so... I like to see it a lot. Alrighty, jumping into our next deck list here. We have Colorless Lugia, 4-3 split for Lugia. This is actually, I think, very similar to my list, except the only thing different is I'm playing one Luminous Energy and playing War Derby. But this is, like, exactly what my list looks like for Colorless Lugia, actually. Um, I don't know. I love to see it. And it's just, I don't know. The deck's super good. It just, it is. Oh, no, sorry. I'm playing two Snorlax, and then I have two Therapeutic Energy, one Luminous, and then one Weird Ear. So I guess mine is actually a little bit different by a couple other cards than I thought, just re-looking at it here. I'm not shocked to see Carlos Luga doing well. It's very good in the format right now. It has very good matchups against a lot of decks. Your hardest matchup is Maridon, so... And so Single Strike Lugia a lot of the times. So... The, the strat, I guess we'll say, is if you're playing Lugia, dodge Maridon. Just, you gotta dodge Maridon. You don't really do good into Maridon, sadly. It's really hard for you to kind of come back in the game, especially if they just go, all right, turn one, put all this stuff down, path, go. And you're just like, oh, um, yep, all right, hope I can find Pumpkaboo or a stadium. And then if you check, when you go check prizes, this happened to me once, I went to go check prizes all three of my stadiums and pumpkin we were prized and i was like yep scoop it up because i just i i lose there's no i'm not even gonna try to play that game it's i got unfortunately lucky it happens it is what it is unfortunate but that's sometimes what happens in pokemon but i'm not shocked to see carlos Lugi up here i like this list a lot i like radiant charizard over luxray because i don't really like luxray is good for the mirror match and against like weird rogue pulkia decks and stuff like that but Charizard is just better into other decks. It just is. Like, you can one-shot a lot of other things in the format right now. So, I like Charizard for those reasons. Alrighty, jumping into our next place deck clear. Speaking of Charizard, we have Arvinzard. Um, Arvinzard's in a really cool spot right now. It got the new Charmander recently. You have your Entei V and stuff. You just hit big numbers, and Charizard's so big. And as the game progresses, it just deals more and more damage, so it's really hard to deal with. Um, I do like Penny in this list because you can pick up your Luminion V that has four Seal Stone if you can't get rid of it in some sort of capacity or 
You can also just pick up, like, Entei if he's getting ready to get KO'd next turn. Just pick it up. And I love that. I think Penny is a good card, just, like, as a one-up in a lot of decks. And a lot of people aren't playing it, and I think they should be, personally. Um, I don't know. I think that Charizard sometimes gets a little greedy with her energies. In my list, I actually play nine energies. I play one four seal, or sorry, I play 10 energies. I play one four seal stone and two lost city and play 10 fire energy. Cause there were so many times where I was just like, I need like one or two more in this deck for this Charizard to be able to go this turn. And I don't have them. So I play 10 in mine just cause there were so many times where I was like, man, I just need the extra energy and I don't have them. And it was so frustrating. So I kind of move things around. I just play with 10 in my list. Um, but Charizard's here. Charizard's good. Charizard just does games. And you can Pidgeot, just quick search and find whatever you really want. And just find the extra pieces. If you you know if you have Charizard EX in your hand, you're just like, all right, quick search. Fire Rare and Candy. Boom. Like, it's just, it's so good. And even Pidgeot's attack to be able to, like, discard a stadium and play is still pretty good. It's pretty underrated, in my opinion. I've used Pidgeot's ex's attack a couple times in a game to like discard path or whatever and then just like two shot something it can work i don't entirely recommend if it can help it but if you have to you have to Alrighty, going into our next place deck here we have fusion mew fusion mew uh, mew just does mew things i mean guys i don't know how else to say this Mew's been a powerhouse since it came out in Fusion Strike, and it's going to go on a tear until it rotates. It just, they've tried to ban it, or sorry, not ban it, they've tried to counter it, they've, you know, Drapion, Spiritomb, Path to the Peak, all these cards came out to stop Mew, we predict and we expected it to, however, the deck still lives, it plays Path in its own deck, like, they don't, sure, Drapion's hard to deal with sometimes, but... I mean, I don't know. You just play Grabber and put it on the bottom of their deck. Like, it's just what you do. This list isn't pretty Grabber. Um, I don't believe Fusion Mew lists a lot of the times are playing Grabber. I think just the DTE version is playing Grabber. Um, I like Avery in this deck a lot, actually. I never played Avery in any any Mew deck I've ever tried out before. However, it does make a lot of sense. I don't like the Trekking Shoes in the deck at all. I, I think it's just awkwardly placed in there and it doesn't make sense to me. Um, just like take out the trekking shoes and put in judge or like an Iono or something like just put in anything else. That's not trekking shoes. <laughs> like I'll be genuinely honest. I think trekking shoes in this deck is straight poopa stinka. It's so bad and it makes zero sense to me. I don't know why you'd put it in here, but maybe this guy knows something that I don't know. I mean, I don't know. He's sitting here in what like ninth place right now with fusion Mew. So it is what it is. All right. For our 8th place deck here, we have another Gardevoir. I am shocked. We have Champions Festival in this deck. And if those that don't know what Champions Festival does, once during each player's turn, if that player has 6 Pokemon in play, they may heal 10 from each of them. I would have never thought Champions Festival would get played in this, but it makes sense. Like, if you just need to heal extra stuff... Either that or this person just put it in here because they went to Worlds and they're like, I want to show off my World Championship Champions Festival or whatever. I don't know. So, it makes sense that it's in here. However, you don't have to play it. Xena's Resolve is also a little weird in this deck. I guess, like, you discard two energies and then you can just draw cards. So, I guess that's why it's in here. However, I feel like at that point, you just play, like, an extra Professor's Research or just play something else like Xeno's resolve i don't i get it but i don't like it um i just feel like it's kind of awkwardly placed in the deck and it doesn't make a lot of sense um i don't know that's just my very my personal opinion i also like don't play Xeno's resolve in lugia's either um a lot of people play Xeno's resolve in carlos lugia i don't like it in the deck i just i don't know it's i it's a good card and i see why people play it i just there's too many times where I'm like, oh, man, I wish this was any other supporter. Like, I'm looking at my hand. I'm like, all right, supporter for turn. Xena's Resolve. Okay, what do I discover Xena's Resolve? And I'm like, boy, I sure hope I have two Archaeops. Or in this case, boy, I sure hope I have two Psychic Energies to discard. Because if not, I'm just sitting there awkwardly with the Xena's in my hand. And I'm like, I don't know if I want to play this card. So, like, I see why people play it. But I've had too many personal experiences where it just sits there awkwardly. And I'm like, I don't want to play this right now because it just feels bad. So... I get it, but I just rather play a different supporter. Champions Festival makes sense. I get it. Just 
I don't know. I feel like it's in here because they wanted to show off the world's thing, in my opinion, and it doesn't quite make sense to me why you'd put it in here. Like, sure, you heal 10 damage, but that's why Cresselia's in the deck, just to move them off and take a KO on something. So, I get it. I don't know. We'll see. Maybe it's a thing that people start playing now. All right, our seventh place deck here, and this is the one I'm so shocked to see. For those that don't know, this is my favorite Lost Zone variant to play, is Lost Gudra. I love Gudra. Gudra is one of my favorite Pokemon cards currently. It's fun to play. It can go in, like, you play it with Arceus. You can play it with Lost Zone. You play it in Reggie Drogo. Like, the card is so unique, and I like it because it's really hard to deal with. And in this deck, you just Moisture Star, heal damage. Like, you just, any, like, you talk, your opponent's like, all right, I can't two-shot. I have to two-shot you this turn because Rolling Iron makes it do 80 less. So you're just like, all right, boom, Moisture Star, attack again, take a KO. Like, it's so good if you can time the Moisture Star properly. Um, this is very similar to my Lost Zone list, actually, my Lost Zone Gujra list. The only thing different with my Lost Zone Gujra list is I'm playing one Poke Gear and I'm playing one Iono in place of that. However, I'm also only playing two Jet Energy and I'm playing a 4 4 split of Water and Steel Energy. Um, I don't know. It. I like this deck a lot. I'm so glad to see Gudra making a comeback. It was very popular for a while, but it kind of fell off for a bit. And I don't know. I think it's just one of those like weird tier two decks that can just catch you off guard if you're not ready. You're like, all right, I'm playing against Lost Zone. You're like, all right, do this, do this. And then you're like, oh, Metal Energy. Okay, maybe you're just playing like Kyogre with Zamazenta in it. And then they go Gudra V and you're like, oh, okay. That's happened to me before where I'm playing against a Lost Zone deck. And I'm like, oh, yeah, it's like Lost Zone Kyogre with Zamazenta in it. And then I just see them play Gudra V pass. And I'm like, oh, okay, that's, yep, this is different. So you can catch people off guard with this deck a lot. Um, I don't know. I love Lost Zone Gudra. It's one of my favorites. And I'm so glad to see it finally get a decent finish at a regionals because it gets a lot of hate and it makes me upset. <laughs> All right, coming into our sixth place here, we have DTE Mew. The only thing different about this list, truly, is we're just, we're playing an addition, we're playing more than, you know, two, four Steel Stones. A lot of lists play only two, four Steel Stones and three Grabber. I, it's, it's DTE Mew. Like I said, for the Fusion Mew, Mew's going to be around. It's been around and it's not going anywhere until it rotates out in a couple months, whatever, like six or seven months away from now. The deck is just, it's gone on its hair from start till now, and it's going to keep doing it. And it's just, it is what it is. So, nothing too crazy about this DTE list. I mean, other than, you know, three copies of Four Steel Stone, two Grabber. I would rather play three Grabber, two Four Steel Stone. But, three Four Steel Stone also makes sense as well. I get why you would play it that many, because you want to really make sure that you can get it off. And make sure that you can use your V-Star ability, because it's the only V-Star ability the deck has that's able to use. So I definitely get it. All right, coming into our fifth place deck here, we have another Lost Zone Giratina. Just heavy Iono, or sorry, not heavy Iono. Heavy Path of the Peak, two Iono, two Roxanne. Just disrupt your opponent, go fast, play energies, and just chorus and get to seven as fast as possible so we can Mirage Gate onto Giratina and just start punch and face. A lot of people were playing Cross Switcher in a deck like this as well. Um, I don't really like Cross Switcher in it. I'd rather just play the more consistent variant or the variant I'm currently playing where you have like a little bit of spice. Um, I feel like the four Cross Switchers is like way too much and it doesn't, there's, I've tried it and there's too many times where I'm like, all right, one is in the prize. All righty, you got three in hand. I'm like, Cross Switcher this, take a KO. And then like I whiff on the Cross Switcher out of my prize and then i'm like man i really wish i just had like an additional boss or an escape rope to get this thing out instead of cross switchering that's just my personal opinion you can play whatever you want to play or what you want to play in the deck that's just me personally that's what i would want to have in my lost zone giratina list but once again not shocked to see it here lost zone giratina is a very good deck is very popular and it's very strong. I mean, Giratina V-Star is just an insane card. And we know that Sableye and Cramoran are just good. Like, Lost Zone has been a thing now for quite some time. And it's gone on a tear for a while. I mean, it won back-to-back -back regionals. It did really well in this one as well. And it probably will for the foreseeable future. All right. Coming into our top four here, we have Colorless Lugia. <sighs> 
I don't know. It's it's kind of very similar to the one that we had seen win Sacramento, I believe. Um, three Snorlax, three Lugia V, and a V Star. You play your Mew, your Word Deer, your Luxray for the Mirror Match with Reversal Energy. The only thing that I would potentially change is I might I would change the four Lugia V, but we all know why I always do that. I would go to two Professors Research and play one Penny. I think Penny is so good in any Lugia deck you're ever gonna play. And I feel like it should say that way. Colas Lugia, it's not as good. However, it's really good in Single Strike Lugia. And I've had a lot of moments where I'm playing Colas Lugia that I do need that Penny to be able to just pick up my Word Deer or pick up my Drapion that I don't need in the active because that's what I started with in the game. So I like it a lot for that because it's not just a f like free two prize for my opponent that I can't move out of my active spot. So for those reasons... I like Penny and Lugia a lot, but I also understand why people don't play Penny in it. I get it. Um, especially in a best of three format. I'm very still used to best of one currently because I haven't really played in any regionals or anything. And I haven't made top cut at a League Cup yet. But we will see eventually. I think my best finish so far has been like fourth place at a League Challenge. So we'll take it. I guess and I've also, like I won Scarlet Violet, Paul Day Evolved, and Obsidian for play releases back to back to back. Um, and then I just played in... The Paradox Rift one last night. It went 3-1. Scrubbed that against a guy playing Iron Hands. It was unfortunate. He just had, like, the hand, and I couldn't do anything about it. Um, but moving into our third place deck here, we have Chen Pao Back Scalibur. It's Chen Pao Back Scalibur. It's Rare Candy, or, yeah, Rare Candy on a Back Scalibur. Radiant Greninja, jam energies onto a Back Scalibur. Cross Switcher up, Mana Fee, Canceling Cologne, take two prize. Hopefully do it again next turn. Boom. It's just... I don't know. I've even had plays where I go, all right, bring up Badoof, hit this, hit that. Like, and just hit Frigibax, or like the mirror match, I've gone like, Badoof, hit your Frigibax, your lone Frigibax, and then they just concede to me, because I not only did I destroy their launch, but I either draw engine for next turn, and I destroyed their only Frigibax, now I'm up two prize. So, for that, I like it a lot. Pokestop's really good in this deck as well. Um, I don't know. Chen Pao, Chen Pao is proving itself to be a good deck and a competitor. Sometimes your brick hands are really bad and it feels awful. However, the turn, the games where you can just get two prize off of Greninja with the canceling cologne combo, you're pretty far ahead. And if they have no way to like boss up Chen Pao or anything or KO your back they're like, okay, I'll KO your Greninja. And you're like, okay, um, super rot it back in, nest ball, grab it do it again or you just go like chimp take out a big two prizer go up two more prize so i understand why chimp doing really well for a long this a long the longest time i was not a believer in this deck i did not think that chen pao was gonna be good i thought it was straight up a pile i thought it was really really bad um but it's proven itself to be good i don't this is starting to seem like it might be the optimal way to play chen pao we'll have to see guys we'll have to see truly all right, going into our second place deck here, we have Turbo Lost Box coming in second place. I like this deck a lot. I like Ditto in Lost Box because it's basically a fifth Comfey, essentially, and I love that. I also like Beach Court a lot in the deck because it gives you that free retreat out of your Comfey's, your Sableyes, your Cramorant, your Greninjas, and your Raikus, and even like your Manaphy and Spirit Team if you have to. The only thing you can't retreat out of is Dragonite, but if your Dragonite's stuck in the active and you had to start with it, that's just unlucky, truly. It just is. Other than that, this deck is really good. I mean, it's, it's even playing the Canceling Cologne combo with Raiding Greninja. It's playing the four cross switchers in the deck to be able to pull that off. It's a very, like, hybrid Turbo Law Zone deck, I would say. Um, there's a lot of stuff going on in this deck, and a lot of things you're, you can potentially do if the things are given to you in the right order. Um, and if they're not, then you're just like, all right. Get to four, Cramorant. Get to seven, Mirage get onto Raikou. Boom. Or get to ten, start with Sableye. Like, I understand it, and I love it, and this deck looks like tons of fun to play, and I genuinely might try this. I do not expect to do well with it, because I'm just not good at lots of decks, unfortunately. But, I like it a lot. I'm really glad to see people changing up Lost Zone Box into so many different ways and trying to put different cards into it, because for the longest time, it was just like, 
copy paste copy paste it was the same turbo lost zone box we've ever seen but now we're playing a lot of different cards in it with like cross switches and stuff and i love that all right i'm not gonna spend too much time on this because i've said it so many times mew is mew first place i mean it's fusion mew with trekking shoes and avery i still am not a believer with the trekking shoes in it i just i don't get it I don't know. If you guys understand why people play while they're playing Trek and Shoes in the deck, just let me know in the comments below, because truly, I don't understand. However, this person did win with it in their deck, so maybe I'm just not seeing something or understanding something that they understand, or maybe they're just... They just play Mew a lot, and I don't really play Mew hardly ever. Um, but it's just DTE Mew with... I mean, sorry, Fusion Mew with a couple DTE energies in it, Path of the Peak, just go fast, draw cards, disrupt your opponent with Avery and Roxanne, and just, just go. I mean, you just try to go fast and just start taking knockouts early and just draw a bunch of cards and just, you go. Mew is Mew, Mew does Mew things, and I will say that for the foreseeable future until it rotates, Mew is Mew, Mew does good things. It just, it has and it will. Alrighty guys, let's jump in to that outro. Alrighty guys, and those are our top 16 decklists from really regionals. If you haven't yet, don't forget to leave a like, smash the subscribe button, drop a comment down below, ring those notification bells. If you went to the regionals, what deck did you play? Where'd you place? And if you didn't go, what deck would you have played? Personally, I probably would have played Single Strike Lugia. I kind of like dropped Colorless Lugia for a bit and picked up Single Strike again, and I'm starting to feel a little more confident with it. I also got a deck brewing in my back pocket for some locals coming up here soon. I got a challenge coming up. I got a cup coming up soon. So I brewed up a, some, a weird rogue deck that I think I'm going to play at my upcoming challenge here next week. Uh, so watch out for that because that'll be fun. I'll probably make a video about it just because why not. Um, but I don't know. I love to see that there are so many different deck lists in top 16. I mean, we're the only big deck we're missing really was like Maridon, but even then like Maridon was still there and it still made like top 32 and stuff it's still a good deck it just had a bad run at this tournament unfortunately like we have sync we had single strike luke making a comeback we have lots of gudra making a comeback we have like fusion mu dte mu we have different gardevoir lists we have like so many like arvinzard's up there like there's so many different decks right now that you can play and take to a tournament and do well with even like locally right like and i love that because it's sign of a healthy format and it makes me so happy to see that truly it does Alrighty, guys i'll see you in the next one peace